Hello everyone, things are moving so fast in geometry nodes at the moment um, that in the last video just a few days ago I said that it is kind of impossible or very hard to move individual faces for the beam me up effect and that's why we did the bubbles. But I had a very interesting discussion with Genesis2303 on uh, YouTube um, and while we were uh, writing back and forth uh, a new Blender version came out and we actually realized that things are now possible. So in this tutorial we're gonna take that same idea from the last one but instead of making bubbles we're actually gonna use the real geometry, the faces of the thing that we want to beam up. So let's jump right into Blender and check it out. And I'm back in Blender 3.0 Alpha and this is a brand new download from just today. So last night's build. Um, and I already have this scene in here. You know, we have that, like the controller plane. We have our object that we want to beam, basically. And all we need to do now is create a new um, geometry nodes node tree. So let's click new and let's get started. First of all, you notice that we now have colored noodles in our geometry nodes node tree, which is very awesome. Was one of the things that I complained about when I first took a look at uh, the old way of doing geometry nodes with all the attributes and stuff. So now we have green noodles for geometry. Very interesting. I don't know why it's fading to white. But whatever, it, that's what it looks like. So now let's um, let's set this up real quick. First of all, we have um, a mesh that, and we want individual faces. And you know that there's a, a split modifier that does that, where you can go into edit mode and do it manually. But there's also a node that does it. So we can go mesh split edges. So now you can see it's not smooth anymore, and that's uh, because. Each face now is its own thing. Like it doesn't share edges and vertices with the uh, adjacent faces anymore. It's its own thing. And that's exactly what we want for this effect. So now we have to do that stuff that we did uh, last time. So we need to take the geometry set position node and we know that we need to calculate a new position. I love the new colored noodles. Awesome. So we need the object info uh, from the controller object, where is it? It's over here. So we can eyedropper, can we eyedropper it? Beam me up controller, right, that's what it is. And then we know we need the geometry proximity node. This is our target, just like last time. And here, this is going to go back tracing to here to get um, the distance from each point to that, um, controller. Cool. We also know that we had a map range node in here. So let's put that in here. We take this distance as our value. We know that it is from zero to something like five. Zero should be a high value to move things up and uh, this should be zero so that they're standing still just like last time. And then um, we need to put this into a position. So we know we need an, a vector combine. This is going to be in there, probably. And this is our new C value. And the X and the Y, uh, we just take by clicking the offset so that this is taking the position and just adding this to the position. And we're only adding a C value, no X and Y. So we're just moving on the C value. Okay, now this is still very empty because we're actually not doing anything yet. What we need to do is the following. We need to tell each vertex, because here we're moving vertices, um, we need to capture the position of each face on the vertices of the face so that we can then move those vertices um, with our proximity here. So first of all, we need to capture an attribute, attribute capture. And the way this works is we want to capture face data. What do we want? In this case, we want a vector 
and what vector do we want of that face? We want the position of the face. So the way you read this is this note puts the face position as a vector info onto each vertex, right? We're always working with vertices, with points in this geometry, in these green noodles, we always have points. So now each vertex knows the position of the face that it belongs to. Cool. And this is what we need. This is that position. And we need to multiply that on top of here. So vector math, multiply, let's do it this way, and this way. So now we have that. So what is happening? It's not working. Uh, oh yeah, so relative, right? So, okay, it's doing something. Now the problem is that this pa path here calculates the proximity of a vertex to our controller plane. So each vertex, even though we want to move the entire face, and there's actually an input in here, the source position input, which would be exactly this information we don't want the position the source position of each vertex we want the source position of each face which we get from here if i put this here we have a nice flow through here okay this is pretty much already awesome and this was kind of possible with the build from three four days ago okay this was possible but now where it starts to get a bit weird is, let's do like what we did in the last tutorial. Let's add a utility random value and let's multiply that with a simple utility math node onto this. And we have that at point two, I believe. And should, this should be our C value now. And you can see something weird, weird is happening because now everything is being stretched out. We're not moving individual faces anymore. So let me just show you. So if we move this, we can move the C, we can move the X and we're moving the individual faces. This is perfect. If I plug this into the C and use this vector, then we actually have this, which is what we want, but we want to randomize. Now think about it. I'm plugging a C value in here, zero, zero, C. I'm just switching over to a different C and it looks completely different. We're stretching our faces. Why is that? That is because this path going from here back down to this node says, give me a random value for each vertex, not for each face. Okay, just like this node if you don't plug in this source position, gives you a, a, a proximity value for each vertex. So, and this is where I got stuck. This is why I thought, okay, this doesn't, it just doesn't work. But now with the new random value node, it actually has an ID input. So what do we have to put in there? We have to tell this random value node, um, we don't want a a random value for each vertex of this geometry. We want a random value for each face. So we need to capture another attribute. We can do that before or after, it doesn't matter. It just has to be in that path of the geometry going through here. So let's just duplicate this geometry, uh, this capture attribute node. Let's put it, I don't know, let's put it, let's put it down here. Okay. Okay, so geometry is going through. That's good. And what do we want to capture? Again, we want to capture a value per face. We want to capture an integer and we want to capture the index, the, the, like zero, one, two, three, the number of the face. So we need to go input index. Just like we're capturing the position of the face, now we're capturing the index of the face. 
and each vertex now knows the index of the face. So each vertex can use that index of the face for its random value, right? So if there's a face with four corners and this face has index uh, 42, then all four corners get a random, the same random number because we're, this is like a, a different type of seed, right? It's getting the same random number, which means we're moving all four vertices of that face with the same random number, which means we're moving the face as it is. And we're done. This is it. I think. <laughs> Hold on. What is happening? Add random value. Do, 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 do. Oh, this, this is add. This has to be multiplied. Okay. So now we have random, just like in the, the bubbles video, right? Some are moving fast, some are moving slower. Maybe we could even set this to 0.3. So we do have random and we're keeping our faces and the shape of the faces. So now all we need to do after our geometry nodes modifier, we just plug in a solidify and give them some thickness. Cool. And this is it. Now we have uh, the beam me up effect. And this time we didn't do it in animation nodes like in that video a while back. We did it with geometry nodes. And this is the node tree to do it. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks again to Genesis2303 on YouTube for figuring this out with me. Like I said, this is the latest Blender. So if you want to use this and you want to stay on top of this, you always have to download the latest Blender. You can use Blender Launcher, uh, which I think you can download from GitHub. Just look for Blender Launcher. Very handy tool to always download the latest version and be able to start different versions on your system. As usual, I will put the blend file on my Patreon page for you to download. Comment down below what do you think about the new node trees with the colored noodles. I love them. I think it's so much clearer to see what's flowing where. Next thing you can try is scaling the faces as they're floating up. Maybe make them smaller like the bubbles or bigger. Uh, how could you maybe rotate the faces? I'm not sure if it works. I haven't tried it yet, um, but I will keep playing with this. If you have any cool results, don't forget to post them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Chris P out. For more awesome content, like and subscribe now.